We are storytellers. We are storytellers. We are storytellers. We take something from the inside, from deep within, put it on the outside, turn it, twist it, and see it from a distance or up close, and share it, share it, and share it, and share it with the world. We listen. We're curious. We create. We collaborate. And we educate. Information and cultural exchange. Information and cultural exchange. Ice. 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 Information and cultural exchange. Welcome back to Chatterbox. Vuli, I've got to say, I'm extremely impressed with the work Koori Connections are doing. Yeah, looks like so much fun and what a great way to engage young people with cultural activities that are relevant to Australia. Speaking of Australia, it's that time of the show where you get to find out what's happening around your part of Australia. The Bulletin Box with Andy Minchu. Over to you, Andy. Hey guys, and welcome to the Bulletin Box this month. We have another action-packed month. Starting in New South Wales, we have the Bondi Winter Magic Festival. Now this is filled with street art and also fashion exhibitions and even an ice rig. So get your ice skating on, starting from now all the way to the 26th of August. Now in Victoria, we have the Emerge Festival from the 1st to the 31st of July. Now this event is run by Multicultural Arts Victoria to help promote diversity and commemorate United Nations World Refugee Day. So check it out. In Queensland, during the 16th to the 29th of July, we have Delectable, which is a 14-day food program. Also, there's music and entertainment and even 3D projections. So watch out, Vivid Sydney. You have some competition. Now guys, Canberra is the place to be during the school holidays. Between the 9th and the 20th of July, there's a thing called Discovery Space, which has nothing to do with space, but lots to do with textile wrapping. Now this is an awesome workshop where you're gonna have heaps of fun. So go to www.nma.gov.au and check out the program. And finally, guys, happening nationally is Stress Less Day on the 27th of July. Now, on this day, wear anything you want to work as long as it makes you stress less. Also, don't forget to donate to this awesome cause. Well, guys, that's it for me. I'll catch you guys next month on Bulletin Box. See ya. Boy, I've got a question for you. Go ahead. What makes the world go around? That's easy. Money makes the world go uh, around. Everyone knows I, that. How did I know you were going to say that? I think strong women do. Have you heard of the saying by the scholar Dr. James Emanuel? If you educate a man, you educate an individual. But educate a woman, you educate a nation. <laughs> I think you've been listening to a little bit too much Julia Gillard now. No, a man actually said it. And what? talking about women that educate nations mm. is Fran Dobby. Who's that? She is a mother, an inspirational speaker, a charity organization founder. I mean, the one thing that inspires me most about this woman mm. is her simple emphasis on smile and having fun. And we were lucky enough to travel all the way to far north Queensland as she joins the Pompora people. Now let's see how they receive her. Thanks, Molly and Aisha. That's right, I'm at the top end of Australia speaking to the Indigenous people about health, wealth, ancient customs and wisdoms. My name is Fran Dobby and here's a snapshot of life at the top end of our great country. Fran Dobby is a Yuan woman who travelled to far north Queensland to explore Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander wisdoms with the local community. In this instance, she's with the Pomparau people. This garden has been a whole community-based project. Very sustainable, that the food then goes back to the community. So I suppose that's the importance of creating little micro-businesses and then training the people up, empowering them, which is lovely to see which is what I've been involved in with these ladies, with the beading, 
literacy, teaching them to read, to write, tell their story. So you take them every weekend? Every weekend, every fair uh, time. It's still boring for the kids. Yeah. Teach them things. They help us to drag that big fish while we are dragging. Yeah. All that wisdom. Yeah, we always tell them that bush food is better for the kids. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my grandchildren when you go out, there's a lot of bush food out there where you can survive. So one day when you grow up, they would know what. Yeah, miss or what the fish like, and uh, there's so many bush foods out there. Our children don't know. Yeah, we should have taken I would, out. I would love you to take me out. <laughs> but this is a good medicine too. So this medicine here is on the beach. The leaf. The leaf is good for jellyfish. For good for jellyfish. Yeah, if you get stung by a jellyfish, well, yeah. you rub your, put it in the hot water. Yeah. Pull it out and you rub it. Oh, very good. Your, yeah. So these are on the beaches everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, everywhere. These trees here. Yeah. When when our children or like us people have sores. Yeah. We dig the roots of the tree and scrape them and boil them and wash the children's sores or our sores. So then the sores go away. Yeah, and the sores go away. Do the crocodiles come out now? No, but if you go to this river or that river down there, yeah. you can see a lot laying on the beach. I've only seen one. One. And I don't want to see any more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. Yeah, I'm scared of crocs too. When I'm dragging net to her, I always think of crocs. <laughs> Do you worry that they're going to get you? Sometimes when I'm out on the deep side, you know. Oh, you walk right out there? Yeah, dragging it. Not right out there, we can see them. That's how we tell the, our kids not to swim when we see crocs. You know, yeah, yeah. No, when you get here, put it in the cup. Yeah, you stir it, this one here. That's what she told me. And you drink it and it'll cure you. It'll what, clean what, what, your... Wow, look how big it is. <laughs> The That's it for me. A big thank you to all the people who have contributed, especially the community of Comparao up in far north Queensland for their gentleness, their wisdom and their willingness to share their knowledge with me. How cool is Comparao? You know, I never even knew about that place, but now I think it's pretty cool. I mean, imagine going there from the city as well. Yeah, that Fran Dobby really is an amazing lady. The woman inspires me and Pompora is a cool place. We've been visiting so many cool communities today. You know, it's funny, like, I could have never even imagined them until we finally get a chance to see them. That's why it's very smart to always take your cameras with you. And speaking of cameras, next up we've got Real to Real. It's a segment that talks about film and now we'll be looking at dollies. Um... Dollies are for little girls. I don't think we're going to be looking at dollies. How did I know you were going to think like that? Ben and Amin are going to be talking to us about tracking shots on Reel to Reel. Over to you guys. Thanks, Aisha and Vooli. That's right. I'm joined today by Amin. Amin? Amin's actually in the Colour Grade studio at the moment, colour grading his first feature film. So he's out there actually doing the real filmmaking thing. So this month on Reel to Reel, we're going to teach you a little bit about tracking shots, of which there are four. There's the pan, there's the zoom, there's the tracking shot with a dolly and a tracking shot with a crane. And now we're going to talk about why we employ these different techniques to, I guess, essentially better connect the audience with the central character and or object of your shot. So let's firstly have a look at probably the most common, the humble zoom. Okay, first up, let's talk about the zoom. Now this is a shot that we employ when you see a character either appearing to get closer to screen or moving further away from the, from the screen. We do this by magnifying the lens. The reason we use zooms is because it allows us to pick a character and either focus in on them, which means we know they're our central character or object, or conversely, it allows us to be tight on a character and reveal the background. We might reveal there's other characters in the shot or a scary figure lurking behind them. So these are some of the reasons we use the zoom. 
Okay, another form of tracking shot is the crane shot. And this is where a camera is mounted on, you guessed it, a crane. Usually we start from a high angle and we can pan down and reveal the background. Crane shots are a fantastic way to give the audience an omnipotent feel to proceedings. What I mean by that is they can see it from afar and feel as if they have a godlike POV on what's going on. Yet another form of tracking shot is a very commonly used one. It's called the dolly on tracks. Now I'm not talking about Barbie dolls or Ken dolls or Cabbage Patch Kids. It's literally where the camera can follow the movement. So let's say a character is walking screen left to screen right, we can actually track along with them. Now what this does is it connects the audience with the movement of the piece and allows the audience to immerse themselves in the action. You would have seen car chases. They would have been done on tracks at certain critical points. That gives you that feeling that you're almost inside of the car. So when you really want to connect the audience with the action or movement of your shot, use a dolly on tracks. Dolly! Why am I doing this? We're about to talk about the pan. Now the pan is where the camera is placed on one pivot point. As opposed to the dolly where it's actually tracking along by the side of the action, the pan is always mounted in one position and the camera moves as if a head is turning. Now there are two types of pans. We have a whip pan, which is a fast pan, or a slow pan, which as the name suggests, is the camera moving slowly. Now pans don't only connect the audience to the action and reveal other people or subjects behind them and to the side of them, it also implies that they're turning each other's heads, so we're moving from side to side. Another thing that pans do is that they give the audience a sense of time. If we're using a whip pan, which is a quick pan, then usually the scene is rushed, the central character is in need of time and desperate to do something or get somewhere. If we're using a slow pan, it's saying that the character is in control of time and they're taking it pretty easy. And of course, we can pan in two different directions. We can actually pan across the horizontal and off the vertical. The vertical pan is called a tilt pan and sometimes you may even want to adjust the camera to give yourself a Dutch tilt. And the reason we do that is to let the audience know that something is not right. Everything is skew if. Just some more tips that you can make some really effective statements just by the position of your camera and the way you move it. Handheld shots can be really effective for a series of reasons when you're dealing with the audience's POV. It says to the audience that things are abuzz, things are on the go, there's so much happening that the central characters don't have time to think. So time is a central issue. The other thing handhelds can do is it gives you that POV. So for instance, if someone was walking next to someone else and you wanted the real jerky effect of what that's like, you could always move it a bit as you're walking around. So sometimes it's not always important to lock your camera off. Sometimes it's good to get movement by the way you move the lens itself.